Okay, uh, well, I'm Harold Steves. Um, we have a cattle ranch uh, with my son and myself uh, in, at near Cache Creek uh, in the Kamloops area in the interior of British Columbia. And uh, we uh, raise and sell grass-fed beef. Yeah. Uh, what we have found is that when our cattle come off the cattle range where they've been grazing on grasses out in the uh, hilltops in the Kamloops area all summer long, uh, we put them on the alfalfa field. And the alfalfa fattens our beef just as good as grain does. And the difference is they have less fat, uh, we think a better flavor, and they're actually even more tender than grain-fed beef. Our butcher uh, in the Savonar area at Camview uh, Lake uh, uh, Meats found that he had difficulty carving the beef because it was so tender he has to cool it down a little bit before he cuts the beef so it is tender. We are very much concerned that um, alfalfa would become genetically modified. There is absolutely no reason to have GM alfalfa. All alfalfa needs is good soil and water. And if you have good soil and water, the alfalfa is so lush that it smothers the weeds. Mm -hmm. And we have never had to spray our, our, our fields for weeds and weed control. We have had some weeds or one weed variety we were concerned with at one time, and that was where you would see dandelions sprouting up and you'd see the yellow flowers above the alfalfa in the spring, and they'd go to seed, and we were worried that uh, we had our fields contaminated with dandelions. We investigated the dandelions, and the leaves of the dandelions were growing a foot tall through the alfalfa and quite, a, quite wide. And we found out that the protein value of the dandelions was the same as the alfalfa. So our solution was, why worry about it? We should just simply feed the dandelions to the cows, and that's what we do. Uh, most cases, the alfalfa smothers out the dandelions as well. So um, we don't really see the need for, uh, at least in our farming operation, uh, for having GMO alfalfa. And if they did, it would certainly hit our bottom line because we sell grass-fed beef. It's basically organic, and we couldn't look people in the eye and, 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 and say that we have healthy beef if we were feeding them GMO crops. And I think that will affect every cattleman in British Columbia who wants to change from a grain-based ration to an alfalfa ration. We have the opportunity in British Columbia of rebuilding our beef herds. We went through a recession, we went through mad cow disease and the high cost of grain because of biofuels. All of these things hit the cattlemen in British Columbia and uh, for about 10 years they were getting about 75 cents to 85 cents a pound on the hoof. We were direct marketing our alfalfa finished beef and getting about $1.40 per pound on the hoof. So we had no trouble going through the last downturn in terms of raising livestock because we had alfalfa. But we could not go and tell our public in Vancouver that we had really good, pure, organic, and we're not certified organic, but organic beef at any given time if we had GMO uh, 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 in the uh, alfalfa. The other aspect I'm concerned about as well uh, there's been a study done by the uh, University of Iowa that was just completed in 2011 where they compared monoculture with a four-year crop rotation. And they found out with a four-year crop rotation with, with, with putting livestock manures on the soil, growing hay or, uh, or pasture for a year, and then one year of corn and one year of other crops, they found that it took a lot more labor but they reduced the chemicals so much that it didn't cost them any more and they produced the exact same amount of food. So you don't have to have GMOs to feed the world. In the combination with livestock, manures on the soil and composting, you can equal the production of GMO crops, I would say of any kind. And they have proven that in Iowa. So we think that British Columbia, where we've had a lot of tree kill, millions of acres of trees killed, is now grassland, we could supplant the beef industry that has fed grain by uh, focusing on raising our herds on the grasslands of British Columbia and raising alfalfa for the final fattening process. And I think that is a new era for BC farmers that would bring them a much greater return than selling to the XL Foods and companies that have problems with, with E. coli and things like that that you don't get 
with grass-fed beef. You mentioned manure. Is that because the concern would be contamination from alfalfa seeds in manure? Well, if, if you're raising a, a, an animal and you, if you feed them a, feed them a GMO crop, we don't know what happens because the, 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 how the GMO crop affects the animal and what the, the residue, certainly from the GMO crop, would end up going through the animal into the manures. And if you were to put those manures on a field that would, you wanted to be certified organic, it's, it's just the same as, as putting food waste on uh, into the compost and putting it on those organic fields. You, you don't know what's in it. Mm -hmm. And so we'd sooner see that the manures that go on the fields are, are clear of GMOs and, and herbicides and pesticides and hormones as well. Could you speak to this issue of um, hay that's imported from um, the United States into British Columbia? One major concern that we have is that in the lower mainland of British Columbia, a lot of the hay is imported from south of the border in the United States, and they already have genetically modified uh, alfalfa in the United States. A lot of the BC farmers are saying we don't want GM alfalfa in British Columbia. However, if uh, alfalfa gets across the border that's genetically modified, what happens when you feed it say to the horse farmers in, in the lower mainland of British Columbia, and the seeds are spread, uh, then you have the GM alfalfa in BC. The other thing that happens, if you look along the roadsides in BC, you'll find alfalfa growing along the roadsides everywhere. Fortunately, most of that alfa alfalfa will be coming from the Kamloops area south to the lower mainland, so we don't need to worry about contamination of American alfalfa uh, beyond hope. But on the uh, west of Hope, where all the horse farms are, and the alfalfa from coming from the U.S., you could get contamination of our ditches and, 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 and roadway, roadsides, and that can spread the, the GM alfalfa through the province. So we need a ban on alfalfa being imported into British Columbia. Okay. Thanks, Harold. That's okay, super. that covers it? Yeah. Okay.